Hey everybody, this is Pastor Chris coming to you live from Lexington Park Baptist Church. And this is PC Studios and it is August the 15th, 2022. And coming back live today off a 10 day hiatus, if you will, where I have been on break. Um, spending time with family and friends, doing a retreat center, going to Creation Museum and spending time with my extended family, with my parents. It is good to be, to be back here at the church, and it's good to be back with you here. Hope to have this groove going for a while uh, and continue back with the program. So again, welcome today. If you want to be live, we go out on Castor on numerous channels on Facebook and YouTube, connected with Lexington Park Baptist and Pastor Chris McCombs. But if you want to be live on the program at noon hour uh, daily, you need to be at uh, facebook.com slash Pastor Chris McCombs. So anyway, how in the world are you guys doing? Check in out there. Let me know how you're doing. I uh, see Sherry's out there with me uh, getting back in the groove. I know some people may not have realized I'm back today, but we are here. So I hope we'll pick up some other people. It looks like we got a couple online right now, uh, not checking the other channels, but just on the Pastor Chris channel. So, hey, good morning, everyone. We are going to talk about building a house of God. Um, that's a big issue, right? Uh, but I, I'm going to probably talk a couple days on that, and then I'm going to get into 1 John 1 and 1 John 2. I know Pastor Joe preached on those. Just going to cover a little bit out of each of those on Wednesday and Thursday. And then next week, I'm going to be preaching on John 3 and 4, and then we'll we'll get back into revival, and then we'll get back into First and Second Thessalonians. So that's kind of where you can see the forecast of preaching coming up at the church, but also the teachings that will be coming out on Word of Encouragement. So Family. Family is a big word for a lot of us. A lot of us may come up with different, we think of different things. We have uh, various opinions, perhaps, about what family is. Um, and we may have bad feelings if we've not had a close family and not been close to others. Perhaps family doesn't e elicit good memories. Uh, for me, it does. And the family of God should. But I know some people have bad experiences. Even under my ministry, people have had bad experiences. Not, I don't believe my fault, but people are different. People just have different experiences. And some people like to cast blame. Some people self-inflict. Some people can't understand the family of God. And, and some people, we just have differences of opinion and must part paths. There's a variety of things that can happen. And we know in any family, there's always going to be problems and concerns. But what are we supposed to do when we're talking about building up the family of God and building up family? So I, I spent a lot of time thinking uh, actually about family uh, because I got to go, and I, I wish I'd put up pictures and prepared a little bit more in advance. Uh, I had in my mind what I wanted to say, but I didn't think about sharing pictures. But they're on my Facebook account. Several pictures have been posted. And um, going back and spending time with my family, because as a military man and as a ministry man, if you will, as a, I have been gone from home basically since around 19, well, 88. But then I came back home for some community college, but then basically after 1990 on, I've been gone. So for 32 years, um, I've been away from my physical, biological family. Uh, yeah, I go back to visit. Um, yes, I go back to say hello. But I'm not with my sisters or my mother and my father, which I'm grateful to still have them alive, or my aunt and uncles. So, but going back... It brings back bad memories, like memories of stupid things I did as a kid sometimes, you know. Or, but it also brings back a lot of good memories, the smells, the, the love, the, the memories of what we did, spending time together, places that I go, like the old spaghetti factory and, and uh, going, going to the graveside to visit my grandparents and my great-grandparents and, and my baby girl, Victoria, who died at birth. Um, going to those places, too, taking me back to those moments spending time with my mom, who's pretty healthy, my dad, whose health is a little bit not as well, and he's in assisted living now, um, spending quality time with him. I will forever remember this time, whether I get another chance or not. His health seems good enough to where I, I would say he probably would be around for another visit, but knowing he's in a good place. And, and then getting things in order, I'm trying to get it, because he's a veteran, and he does not have things in order. We had to go, I found his discharge papers and all this other stuff. And now I've got to go appeal to the veterans to try to get some support for him in his latter years. Um, it, those were good moments, though. 
of preparing and planning and praying and processing and and participating in family and spending time together and you know that kind of stuff also falls over into the church as we build family you you live life you you it's not perfect things are not always as they should seem and don't always work out right but we because your family you get in there and you do what you got to do and going back this time I knew I had a mission and that mission was to find out everything I could to help my father in the one week I was there my sisters were really had the brunt of of taking care of mom and then taking care of dad now in the nursing home and visiting him and stuff because but I got to have you know three meals with him there and my family went down there we we just had a great time together really music played music and and uh, what a blessing uh, you know is all I can say but I've been reading first chronicles and that brings me back to this building building a house of God build, building a household and David was doing both building his household and building the house of God and we see David King David and I'm gonna hover around chapter 16 today but um, King David in first Chronicles 11 ends up becoming anointed as king after Saul had failed Saul refused to bring God back into the picture and so David comes and he goes we need to bring the ark back so I'm going to talk a little bit about that later bringing God's presence back right um, bringing the ark back that was really important uh, and David knew that so this whole thing of David starting to build the kingdom uh, the the city of David what which we know is Jerusalem and also building a place for God was inspired upon David as a king he knew the presence of God had to be back so in in, in in, ver in chapter 16, verse 1, it says, They brought the ark of God and placed it inside the tent David had pitched for it. Then they offered burnt offerings and fellowship offerings in God's presence. And when David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he distributed to each and every Israelite, both men and women, a loaf of cake, a date cake, and a raisin cake. Now those four verses are really important, and they... Pr prelude to him assigning tasks to everybody. You can look at verses 4 through 6, and then later in the, in the text 37 through 42. David's making sure everybody's in place for this worshiping of God and bringing God, the ark, back. And we know there had been some times of difficulty because actually David did not know if the ark would ever come back to him. In fact, um, I, I was talking about this um, this weekend on the Jamonville retreat. In fact, David was so concerned about this, uh, I, and I want, I want to get there with you in, in chapter 13, because when he started to move it initially, Uzzah tried to reach out, and he died. Because, and, and it wasn't Uzzah's fault, actually. He was a good, you know, if you read it, David got upset. He's like, man, Uzzah just reached out to keep the ark from falling off. It was because David didn't set up things right. And so if things don't work in your family right sometimes in your life, it's maybe things are not in proper order. The Levites were supposed to carry the ark, not the priest or anybody else. And so Uzzah just found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time, and, and it was a sacrifice to this moment of God's presence coming back. David was upset about it, and probably rightfully so. We can look at it and say, that didn't seem fair, God. But David finally gets it right when he brings it back. But I want you to see what happens in in here in in verses in chapter 13 verses 2 and 3 we see at one point david david says it seems good to bring the ark the presence of god back into the house of the lord and it it seems good to bring the ark of god back because they did not inquire in saul's day they no longer were worshiping god like they should have and david wanted to restore that that's a good thing and then later on in verses 8 through 10 that's where we see Uzzah getting getting hurt but Later in that text, he says, how can I ever bring the ark of God to me? How can I bring God back to me? The ark of God remained in Obed-Edom's family in the house for three months, and the Lord blessed the family and all that he had. So David left it there in the care of someone else, and God was blessing that. So David knew he had to go back and bring it ultimately to Jerusalem where he wanted to in chapter 16 there that I read. He pitched a tent, and that, you know... Uh, where, where God was going to be. And David knew that he had to bring it. 
so there was joy we read right here when they finally bring it back in chapter 16 there's joy they're they're pitching that tent they're offering burnt offerings to them they're they're worshiping god they're eating listen everybody got food and and bread and date cake and raisin cake this was a celebration a fellowship uh, we have brought the presence of god back and as i think of family of god that's what family of god is about but that's what family's about worshiping god together eating together spending time together and that's what david was doing and bringing god back in the house now eventually david would be compelled to realize wait a minute i built a palace for myself but God is in a tent, <laughs> you know, and uh, he was following the ways of Moses, though, because they pitched a tent in the wilderness, but God was going to have a permanency, but we'll talk about this tomorrow. It wouldn't be fulfilled until Solomon, but David knew in this moment the presence of God was so important to the people of God. The presence of God was important to the household of God, but not just to the assembly of God, but also to his own household. We see in verse 43 in chapter 16, it says, after David had prepared and got all the worship in place and they had this huge celebration and God put and then David put everything in order. It says then all the people went home. Then all the people went home. And then David returned home to bless his own household. Listen, part of worshiping God, blessing God is also about blessing your own home. You are blessed by God and your house is blessed by God because you experience the presence of God in his house. And that's what David realized. If you look at verse 1 and then 43 in chapter 16, it really was profound upon me. I worship God. And I learned to worship God through with my family. I learned some of you did not. But the family of God is the family of God. The assembly of God is the assembly of God. And after we worship God and have that house in order, then we make sure that when we go home, we bless our homes. We bless our lives. We bless our wives and husbands. We bless our children. We bless our work. We bless all that we do. Because we have been blessed in God's presence, then we bless others. And we have a blessing over our household. I love that. Then they all went home. And then David returned home to bless his own household. Every time we leave church, we leave the house of God, we go then to bless our households. To bless others. When we come here, we come here to bless God. We come here to praise God. This whole Thanksgiving, verses 8 through 35, are about blessing God and remembering all that God has done and giving Him glory and ascribing the glory to His name, praising His holy name, knowing He is God alone. And then at the end of that statement, as they're worshiping God, let all God's people say, Amen, and praise the Lord. Today, I, I pray you're blessed and you're building a house of God. You're a part of the house of God. You're a part of the assembly of God. You're a part of praising God and worshiping God with all of who you are. And then I pray that you bring that message home to your heart, to your family, to your house, to your work, to the community, that we bring God's ways. And I just get back to that Verses 1 through 4, they put the ark in the tent. They burnt offerings. They worshiped God. They had music before God. They proclaimed his greatness. David had the Thanksgiving statement that he read. He gave them all this food to eat, raisin cakes and date cakes and bread, and they celebrated together. That's what we do every week when we worship our God. That's what we're doing right now. I know this isn't the assembly. It's a digital assembly, right? But right now... We still have a moment together. No, there's not date cakes and, and, and raisin cakes, and although you may have some good food, I've got my cup of coffee right here. But we're here to give thanks to our great God. So I just want to encourage you today, wherever you're at, make sure that you're in the house of God, that you're building the house of God, that you're blessing the house of God, and that as a result, then you are blessing your own household and your own life. May God's blessing be upon you. Good to be back with you today. I hope this message encourages you and blesses you. Remember that we're building a house of the Lord that is not just where the assembly meets, but also every home that's represented under the name of God, under David's regime, but underneath our time, is a household of God. Hey, God bless you. Love you. Good to spend time with you today. Remember these two realities. God loves you. 
and so do I. I'll see you here tomorrow at noon. You take care.